Right then, hello and welcome to Prayer Zone Live. Thank you for joining me for this uh, time of discovery and prayer. It's good to have you with us on this uh, extremely snowy evening in West Yorkshire. I don't know what it's like where you are. Uh, if you're with us on Zoom, we're here till about 7.45. Uh, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, we should be finished in about 15 minutes. So why not join us on Zoom next time? It'd be great to have you here and you get an extra half hour as well. Just think what you're missing. Uh, the title for this March Prayer Zone Live is Sustainable Hope. And I will introduce our two special guests very shortly. But let's start as we always do with a prayer. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father for our time with you tonight. Thank you for bringing us together from many parts of the UK and beyond to hear about your work and to offer you our prayers and our praises. Your word says that your steadfast love never changes. Your mercies never come to an end. And we experience those mercies every day as we walk with you. Thank you for the mercies you've given us already today. Guide these next few minutes together, Lord, and help us to hear your voice as we listen and as we bring our requests to you together. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Right then, let's meet our guests straight away. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you our Reach Beyond UK Sustainability Champions, Tim and Sam O'Brien. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Hello. Good Hi. evening. <clears throat> Good to have you with us. We've had you on before, of course, under a different guise, <clears throat> but it is great to have you on tonight as our sustainability people. So, well, let's start with that. What on earth is a sustainability champion and how did you come to take on this role? Well, I'll, I'll just start by explaining um, the term sustainability because um, it, it's all about thinking about the impact of, of our behaviour and our activity in the world. Um, the United Nations describes um, sustainability as enough for everyone forever. And, um, and it addresses the environmental impact of our behaviour, as well as the social and the economic concerns. So really being sustainable is, is all about addressing um, or being mindful about how we use the world's resources so that everyone has enough, not just for now, but for future generations to come. So we began our journey with Reach Beyond um, a few years ago now when we went on a couple of mission trips to work with refugees in Greece. And we were really affected by the sad stories that they shared and the difficulties that they were facing. And when we got back, um, we, we did some reflection on the refugee crisis um, as a whole. And we realized that we wanted to do something lasting to help. And because of our interest in the environment, um, that kind of as global warming increases, it's gonna lead to harsher living conditions for many people across the world. And it, it, it will probably ultimately um, result in an increase in climate refugees. That's people who are on the move because of the climate um, situation. So we, we thought about this and we realized that one way we could be of use um, was to help reach beyond become sustainable especially through uh, reducing its environmental impact. So we offered our services to Reach Beyond and they agreed to take us on and we became the sustainability champions. So we're, um, we're working to help uh, Reach Beyond be as sustainable as it possibly can. Okay, well, getting back to basics then, is climate change actually happening? Because I know Christians have mixed views on this. So climate change, is an incredibly complicated subject. It um, isn't just Christians who have mixed views on it, but what we've done is try and anchor what we're doing on what we think is the best scientific research available. It's things like uh, the reports produced by an organization called the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, better known as IPCC, and most Virtually, in fact, virtually every country in the world, the national governments has accepted their views. And uh, in addition to which, those views have been accepted by all the major Christian denominations in the UK. 
So Anglicans, Roman Catholics, United Reformed Church, Baptists, uh, all of these organizations have set their own uh, internal agendas for dealing with this issue. Uh, and most of them have set net zero uh, targets. Uh, they've been followed by most of the larger um, mission organizations and by um, uh, uh, Global Connections, which is the, the UK network for world mission. So it's obviously not just our organization that's gone down this route. It is, it is most organizations. Uh, that said, that there is room for different interpretations about the potential impacts. And perhaps at this stage, it's worth just highlighting what it is we're talking about. Uh, to many people, this 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 is obvious and um, it, it's it's well understood. To others, it, it might be less so. But just to recap very very quickly about what we're talking about, climate change is about the world getting hotter, and this temperature increase is getting uh, faster as well. It's intensifying, and as it does so, it has an impact an impact upon weather patterns such as rainfall and wind. And weather is becoming less predictable and, in many cases, more extreme as well. And it's obviously having an impact on, on people around the world who are impacted by these events. And the scientific consensus is that this is principally caused by us, humanity, by us burning since the Industrial Revolution um, that really started to kick off in the uh, 1800s causing we're burning more and more fossil fuels like coal and gas and oil and this is releasing a large amount of carbon dioxide that was stored in these fossils into the atmosphere and as it does so these these gases alongside other gases like methane and nitrous dioxide are creating a warm blanket around the world which is causing uh, or preventing heat from dissipating into space, as it has done for hundreds and thousands and millions of years, and creating something like greenhouse, which is why obviously they're called greenhouse gases. And this graph actually comes from the IPCC, and it shows the, ink, the, the red line, the, the, the thick red line there, shows the observed temperature increase over a period of time and as you can see it's climbing quite uh, steadily up from uh, the, the point where at which um, it's believed human uh, emissions have made a significant impact on the climate um, but god created a marvelously dynamic and adaptable world and under many circumstance in the past there have been natural cycles which can limit the impact of this sort of thing but it seems likely that we have exploited so many of those natural resources in the world the seas the, the rainforests uh, the savannas the, the natural wetlands the earth's ability to recover from incidents or, or factors like this seems greatly diminished um, so the world seems to be moving towards uh, an increasingly uh, inhospitable place for many people. And as, as Sam mentioned, um, uh, this is likely to have an impact on, on many people around the world. And, and in fact, the UNHCR, which is the, the body that um, focuses on refugees, has predicted that by 2050, the majority of people displaced around the world will be displaced by climate related issues. But Jesus told us to go and make disciples. Uh, he never mentioned climate change as a, as a priority. Why should a mission organization like Reach Beyond be focusing on these environmental issues when there are billions of people who don't yet know about Jesus? Uh, a good point. Uh, and these maps might, might perhaps um, illustrate our, our concerns. So if you look at the, the map, on the right with the, the red areas of the globe. This, this is sometimes called the 1040 window. And it shows those parts of the world where in fact, it's most hard to preach the gospel, the most hard 
to reach people groups where most of the unreached people groups in the world are. And obviously, this is the focus of Reach Beyond's um, mission work. And if you look at the other map, this shows the parts of the world where extreme temperatures occur. And the, the few small black parts of those world really concentrated in Saharan Africa are those areas of the world where the temperature currently um, uh, exceeds 29 degrees on average throughout the year. But the darker brown areas, the shaded areas, the areas of the world that the it, it, it's predicted by, I think, 2070 in that particular case, those, those areas that are shaded darker brown will become black. They will be impacted by extreme temperatures. And those are obviously those areas of the world that are therefore going to be most impacted by the effects of climate change. And there are 3.5, currently 3.5 billion people living in those areas. So you can see there's a very clear correspondence between the parts of the world where Reach Beyond is working and the parts of the world where Reach Beyond, uh, which are going to be impacted by climate change. And we felt because of that, because we're working in these areas, if we are contributing in any way to uh, climate change, um, it, it's difficult to have a good conscience about conscience about going into those worlds and preaching to the gospel to the very people who we may be harming by our activities. And therefore, it's not really about changing what we're doing. We're still trying to make disciples of all nations, but we are trying to adjust the way we are doing it by making sure we know we're not doing any harm to them along the way. Are there any specific bits of the Bible which have stood out to you as you've been thinking about creation care and the environment? Well, the Bible is is peppered with verses that relate to creation care. And we've we've actually put quite a few of them on the website. Um, but tonight we, we just wanted to mention a particular thread which runs right through the Old and New Testaments. And that's one of redemption, not just of humanity, but of creation as well. So if you have a look at, at the first um, passage there, we can see in Genesis 1 that God made people in his image. And he did it for a reason, because there's a so that. Um, and you see just after where it says likeness, it says so that. And he, he made us in his image for a reason so that we could rule over creation in a godly way, in the way that he would rule over creation. But of course, we know from uh, Genesis 3.17 that we failed to do this and that one of the results of the fall is that the ground is cursed. In other words, our sin has had an impact not just on humanity, but on the earth itself. And then if we have a look um, at the, um, the story of the flood in Genesis 9, we can see that the dev this devastating flood destroyed every living thing except those things, those uh, creatures contained in the ark. And this, again, was the result of human sin. Yet again, our sin affected the whole earth. But note how God saves not only humanity, but he also saves two of every kind of living thing, such as his love and concern for the diverse and wonderful world that he has made. He doesn't want any type of creature to be lost. He loves them all. And then God goes on to make a covenant, not just with people, but also the earth, that he won't destroy them again with a flood. So again, he's showing his covenant and his love extends beyond humanity to the whole of creation. And then moving on to, to John 3.16, that um, very well-known and very important uh, verse in scripture. Um, it, it's really well known because it gives us such hope and assurance. But the word world here comes from the Greek word cosmos relating to the whole of creation. So Jesus didn't just come to redeem humanity, he came to redeem the whole cosmos, the whole world. And then finally, we're just a, just a brief look at, at this passage in Romans. Now, I know the language in Romans is, is difficult, but I just wanted to pick out a few things from this passage that Paul reminds us in these verses that our sin doesn't just harm us, it also harms creation. He describes the creation as being in bondage to decay. 
And it's such an apt description when we think of the way that we've misused the Earth's resources. But Paul also explains that creation will one day be liberated from this bondage. Jesus' redemption, redemptive death on the cross leads towards new life and restoration, not only for humanity, but also for creation. Now, this won't be complete until he returns, but it will happen one day. Such is our hope in Jesus. So, so what, if Jesus is going <laughs> to... Nearly there, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be long. <laughs> so if, if Jesus is going to restore creation, why don't we just sit back then and do nothing and wait for him to return? Surely that's the easiest thing for us to do. Well, we we've, there are two good reasons. Firstly, because we have a duty of care to the poor and vulnerable. And of course, they are the most at risk from the effects of climate change. And secondly, we have to respond because Jesus has invited us to be part of his kingdom here on the earth. We've been given the responsibility of not only bringing the good news of redemption and restoration to people, but also to creation itself. I'm nearly there. <laughs> As Mark's version of the Great Commission reminds us, go into all the world and preach the good news to all of creation. So this redemptive uh, message it's not just for humanity, but it's for creation itself as well. So what can Reach Beyond UK actually do about these challenges as a mission organisation? Well, uh, three things principally. First of all, we've got to measure actually what we do at the moment uh, in lots of different ways. But one example, um, we have worked with a Christian environmental organisation called Climate Stewards, who produce a tool that enables us to measure how much carbon we are producing as an organization, our carbon footprint, as, as it's often known. And once we know that, and also where we are producing that carbon from, we can move on to the next stage and think about how we can reduce it uh, in, lots of, in lots of different ways. And then finally, there is always going to be an element of what we do where we, we can't reduce what we the carbon we produce, travel being a, an obvious one for an international mission organisation. And in those circumstances, what we can do is, is, is a technical offsetting, where basically we will invest in schemes that are either directly reducing carbon from the atmosphere or preventing carbon from being produced somewhere else. And, and that really is the, is the strategy for us going forward, these three actions, which start again obviously once you've offset you then go back and measure what you've done seek improvements and you reduce again where it's possible okay i'm going to ask you in a, a second to give us some things to pray about but just looking at these two pictures here uh what is what is going on here what are these how are these two things helping so these are two schemes run by climate stewards uh so they they, they in addition to helping us measure uh, our emissions. They also have, have offsetting schemes that we can invest in. And the big advantage of using climate stewards as compared to other organisations is that they are determined to make sure that those schemes actually benefit the communities that they take part in. So I think in, in one of those illustrations, it shows uh, communities being involved directly in uh, planting um, uh, trees and things which act as carbon capture and in the other one it's about um, uh, putting stoves into communities that previously burned uh, wood excessively and produce a lot of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere these are far more efficient um, stoves that reduce their, their their carbon output so that's just two types of um, uh, carbon reduction schemes Okay, so can you give us some things to pray about based on what you've shared tonight? Um, yes, so um, we have, um, we've got a list coming up on the screen, I think. Mm -hmm. I'll read them out anyway, and then we can come back to that. So um, we can pray for those people who are most impacted by climate change, often those who are least to blame for the situation and with the fewest resources to begin with. We can pray for each and every one of us as we grapple with understanding climate change and how we should respond in our own lives. We can pray for those in positions of power, 
that they won't sacrifice the world's well-being for the sake of short-term political or economic gains. We can pray for mission agencies like Reach Beyond, that we can think of creative ways to incorporate creation care as we share the gospel. And we can pray for those already displaced by the climate crisis. Help better, better off nations to recognize their responsibility for these vulnerable people and help us as their mission organization to know best how we can serve the growing number of climate refugees. Okay, thank you, uh, Tim and Sam, for now. Um, I'm sure you've got questions about some of the things you've heard, but don't worry, you'll get the chance to ask those in our question and answer session. That's coming after we've prayed together on Zoom. Just type your questions into the chat box. We'll get to those later. Uh, please make a note to join us on the 13th of April, that's Easter week, for our next Prayer Zone Live event. I'll be catching up with Alan Graham, who manages HCJB2 Radio in Guayaquil in Ecuador. Uh, we had Alan on Prayer Zone Live back in January 2022, uh, and he gave us lots of things to pray about. And I know there has been some specific answers to a few of those prayers, so please join us if you want to find out more to get hold of the link just send an email to prayers on live at reachbeyond.org.uk and you can also use that address to request our regular updates magazine and prayer information or visit the connect page of our website to find out more okay this is where we part company with the folk who are watching on facebook or youtube uh, zoom people don't go anywhere but to everyone else Thank you so much for being with us this evening and goodbye.